Well, this is Greg Allison with Galactic Gregs coming to you on the 2nd of November 2021. It is Groundhog Day, and it looks kind of like Groundhog Day, uh, SN8, SN9, some similarities in these flights. They flew, did a good belly flop, and they did flop in the end. <laughs> a spectacular flight, though. So, again, this is Greg Allison with Galactic Gregs, and we're talking about the SpaceX Starship prototype serial number nine flight that occurred today. It was an awesome flight. It was a great test flight. They're going to learn a lot from this flight. Uh, right now, the time on deck is 1509 hours central standard time. All right, all that said, let's get on with it here. Uh, SpaceX launched, as I said, SN9 today. Uh, it took off, flew beautiful. They did the belly flop. It had excellent control in the flight of that system. Uh, all the aerodynamic surfaces, they got these huge flaps on it, and yet they're driven by electric motors. And they, they even as big as they are, they're fluttering like little insect wings. <laughs> Very excellent control, uh, but the landing was a bit of a problem once again. Uh, so we'll go into that, and we're gonna look at some of this video. I'm doing. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, bang the update notification bell, and click all. You'll get many videos I cover on a broad range of space topics. Because I'm a big picture guy, I've got broad experience. I've seen a lot of things in my many decades and working many different systems, high level, low level, all over the map. <laughs> And I'm just going to skip through this and play through it and talk over it. This is the launch right here. Here we go. And it had an excellent launch. And lift off. Guys. <laughs> you probably see my picture in here twice because I was recording this the way I was. <laughs> So the flight started out very well. It's executed very well. Nice flight. Look at this. What you see, good mock uh, uh, characteristics in the, the plumes when we had the three uh, thrusters burning. It's not space aliens, it's an audio system. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm going to skip forward again. Like I said, we're not going to play this thing out right. We're going to hit some high points here. Now you can see they shut the engine down. Every time they shut an the engine down, you got a little plume coming out here. I'm actually pointing at it with my cursor as I'm videoing this thing. Let's see the match. <laughs> two things can be happening here. One, the, the valves may not close entirely. You got some gas still coming through the system, bleeding through. So you can get residuals like that, not burning, but gas just nevertheless bleeding through. This is, um, could also be something burning here on the side, but it's just coming out from the very edge. That's kind of interesting. Thank you. And you can see it on the back side here. It's coming out from the very edge all the way around now, whatever this is. But uh, this never ignites directly over some flame down here from the flame of the vehicle itself. Oh, that's kind of interesting to see that just right off the edge. You can see the main rocket, the actual exhaust of the rocket itself is almost clear. You know, you don't see much when the rocket itself is burning. You know, unlike it, it's not smoky looking or steamy looking, whatever that was. You see, there it goes again. Like you see, some debris falling off. That's what catches my attention. You know, we saw the characteristics like that in the first flight. Now, they'll tell you everything went normal. Maybe it did. Again, see me pointing to that uh, plume coming out of one of the engines there. So they're not out of one engine here. I'm going to skip forward again. We're trying to make the final final ascent. We're about to do the belly flop. You, know, you will burn most of your fuel out. But they need enough when they do the turnover to, for the fuel to get down to the headers of the engines. They had some... Uh, Problems, they believe that header tank condition, they thought they had a workaround for it. But that workaround may not have worked, I don't like it worked adequately. And you're gonna see this thing crash in them shortly, but they're gonna they're going have a really good belly flop here. Skip for it again. So what I'm doing is I'm just playing segments. Here we come down, go back, here we go. She's about to do the turnover. Camera lost it, she's about to turn right here. Here we go. Here we go, here's the turnover. 
fires an engine. So they got a good restart on this engine. And they did the other time. They had one engine restart good. And that's, that's the only engine that actually restarted good. So what happens is it comes in too hot. Ended at least one other engine fired up. And bam. See, it was leaning too much when it came in. It, had, it just wasn't coming in straight. And there we go, my friends. There it is. I've said, well, the cool thing, well, not so cool. Look at you can see the upper tank rupture here. That did not, you saw with seal PV, so you, uh, you saw me falling with my cursor that I caught it real fast. That's my cursor from when I was actually watching this. So I caught it real fast and I was falling at seal PV that, that popped out. Boom. Let's see, where's that? There it goes. Look at that. <laughs> I guess fly it off. I guess it's a seal PV. Might be an RCS, but I think it's I guess I'm burning over here. Yeah, it was a total destruction of the system. Uh, and right next to it is SN10, waiting for the next launch. Now, part of the, they say part of the objective of this is to see if SN10, if you don't have another vehicle on the launch pad, if it does stand the overpressure of some event like this, well, it did. Doesn't mean it would stand a full up Starship. <laughs> but you won't be bringing back uh the, the the starship and the uh super heavy uh all at once in one piece so yeah hopefully something happens and i'll be one now yeah see this look here's this debris falling look at this guys this debris is falling right over sn10 i'm falling with my cursor there look at that guys wow so then there might have been some shrapnel pepper it on the other side if you meant some other pieces falling around you can bet some of the other hardware at the launch site probably took a little damage. So I wouldn't expect SN10 to be flown immediately. Let me stop this thing entirely. Don't expect SN10 to be flown immediately. Uh, they're gonna have to go back and do some investigations, figure out what went wrong, see if they can fix it and rectify it for SN10. They don't want that to happen again if they can avoid it. You know, the purpose of this is to learn. You know, it's, uh, you know it, it, this is an experimental flight. And it's good that SpaceX has the fortitude to be able to take hits like this to have not everything work out right special experimental phase of a rocket development program nasa became very risk adverse like well, we can't have anything go wrong ever and that leads you to spending tons and tons of money and still things are going to go wrong especially early on because there's just so many unknown unknowns and you know you, you can have everything worked out in theory but the reality is a different matter entirely so models and theories, you know, they're, 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 they're nothing compared to reality. Uh, you know, models are only as good as our model. You know, we, we say that, you know, models, you know, in a crew hour, we, we say models know I'm <clears throat> good, but occasionally, sometimes they're useful. <laughs> Just, you don't count on them. You don't rely on them. Yeah. I've seen people who have been totally reliant on models and programs. Uh, and early on, you know, I got kind of perturbed in some early days working space station. I saw some people that just thought models were going to tell them everything. And I was going, uh-uh, 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 no. Especially later, even in the early days of some of the rocket stuff I was doing before. You know, NASA had kind of a, a dearth of experience after developing shuttle. It was some long time before they really developed anything else new. Probably the next vehicle they've flown uh, of any size outside of Wallops was the uh, Ares uh, 1. One uh, X, Aries One X, the test Aries, uh, and you, know, you saw how that went. But that that gave all the guys at least something to chew their teeth on. I myself developed my own rockets, my hybrid rockets, and that gave me a lot of experience and hands on. And I got to see that you know the the three of the models are, are way apart, <laughs> way apart in reality. So that's that's a good thing about building things and flying things. So. Um, yeah, you, you remember as, as they were developing the Falcon 9 boosters and trying to land them, uh, especially when they were landing them on the decks of boats, uh, they had quite a few crash and burn initially, quite a few, until they learned how to stick it. Now, that was a very adventurous thing, trying to have the control systems to stick something that's coming in like a long, tall, skinny pencil, and you're controlling it from the bottom. That's hard enough as it is to control something. You know, hold a pencil steady, okay? Now, imagine that you're either going up or coming down, and you got, you know, thrust down here and, and you got to control all this by dithering this just a little bit. And that's what the thrust factor control does. And then you're not just coming down, but you're landing on a heaving deck of a boat. You know, it takes a lot of data coordination, data fusion to be able to, to match that, you know, or it's, you know, that was 
that was extremely impressive. Uh, I'm impressed that they were able to pull off the belly flop because the belly flop uh, it had never been done with a rocket vehicle like that. So I was impressed with that. Now, what they've not been able to, to nail is the turnover and landing. Uh, it might be that, you know, they should just do the turnover higher up, not do it right at the last minute, which might mean they need more fuel to make it work. But, you know, because uh, they're turning over last minute, that fuel has got to get in, in those injector heads, those motors right off the bat. If you're not getting enough there, it's interesting. He let one motor though each time, but not two. But that last time, this last flight on SN9, it didn't come down like that. It came in like this. It was coming in hot and it's coming in at an angle. So at that point, they were just trying to get it to the location. So it did come in different. At least uh, SN8 came, I believe SN8 come down more, a little bit more straight down. But SN9 really appeared to come in at more of an angle. Thank you for watching.